scanning for audio. Hello, welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yes, I've still got that terrible voice and I do apologise. But here we go. Because today we're talking about the sixth Doctor Adventures, The Quinn Dilemma. Yes, its title comes from The Twin Dilemma, that story that we all love so much. No, we do. We do. Don't tell anyone what you actually think. It's not worth it. So, The Quinn Dilemma. Clever. Okay, hands on table. No, hands up? Yeah. What we've got when it first starts is you start thinking, this is a bit familiar. This feels a bit like Stardust. But like most stories, you go, oh, that's a bit like something else. And then everyone comes along and waves their Doctor Who shaped magic wand and everything's better. And yeah, it might have echoes of something else, but everything's got echoes of something else. What we've actually got here is, and I will quote this, the single best Sixth Doctor audio box set ever to come out of Big Finish. If ever you've loved Big Finish, this is a Sixth Doctor set you should own. Right? That level of enthusiasm cannot be bought because I just bloody loved it. Genuinely. It's the anniversary story that came out in March 2024 to celebrate 40, yes, four zero years of the Sixth Doctor. I don't understand how that's happened. I mean, that would make me in my early 50s. That couldn't possibly be right. Okay, let's bomb through the synopsises. Because let's face it, according to this, there are six episodes. Right, the only way this could have been made more perfect is if it had Evelyn in it. It couldn't have Evelyn because Maggie's no longer with us. And that is literally the only thing wrong with this story. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I need to enthuse about episode two. Episode one, The Exaltation by Jacqueline Rayner. Hints of a temporal anomaly bring the Doctor and Mel to Runapal on the day the King Otho steps down as ruler. But Otho has a dilemma. Which of his five sons should succeed to the throne? He has a deadly game in mind to solve the problem, and his target is a certain Time Lord. Yeah, we get it. Five brothers fighting for the crown, all played by the same actor. Genius! And an audio, it just works great. Okay, so you've got the setup. It's basically that medieval thing, but with spaceships. Lovely. This one's got Mel and some random new person. Story number two. Oh, sorry. So at the end of that story, all of the princes head off across the stars to try and find a version of the Sixth Doctor. Now, there is one there on that planet. There's another version of the Sixth Doctor available on, well, this episode's called Escape from Holy Island by Chris Chapman. Okay, a couple of things. I have wanted story set on Holy Island for years. You know from my accent, I'm from the Northeast. Uh, I even wrote a story set in Bede's World. So, yeah. But here's more important. It's set directly after Time Lash, and it's got Herbert Wells in it. Oh yeah, it's a Perry and Herbert story. I've wanted the Herbert Wells boxed set available to come out of Big Finish. What, 15 years I've been banging on about this, wanting this nice TARDIS setup where Herbert's the companion. And I finally got it, and it's set in the Northeast. Oh, I did a little dance. I really did. It's like Radio Free Scarrow people coming across a story set in Canada featuring some Canadian who I won't have heard of. The history books tell us that on the 8th of June, 793 AD, the holy island of Lindisfarne, which people keep calling it Linda's Farm, which is hilarious, was burnt to the ground by Viking rainers. But history also says that the fiery dragons were seen flying in the sky. Can this be true? With time running out, the Dr. Perry and young H.G. Wells mobilise an island full of monks as the real raiders of Lindisfarne thunder down over the North Sea, and they don't look like Vikings. Yeah, it's just exactly what I wanted from a Doctor Who story. Always. 
Then you've got Sibling Rivalry by Robert Valentine. The Doctor, Constance and Flip. Flip's back. Sorry, Ooh, why have I not mentioned this? Lisa Greenwood, who's not been well, is back in Doctor Who. Oh my God, sorry, this is hurting my throat so much. I love Lisa's character and I'm so pleased that she's back for this. I really am. And she sounds really well and I'm just dead happy. So thank you. Sorry, that's, that's a fan, me fanning about the whole thing, but I'm just grateful she's back. And I hope that she continues to come back. Okay. The Doctor, Constance and Flip are stuck on an alien planet in the middle of a civil war. To make matters worse, the Sontarans have invaded. I know, Sontarans, more Sontarans. What's not to love? <sighs> to make matters worse, the two dastardly Quins, the Violet Clarent and the Odious Delon are both on the scene and the Doctor may not survive their furious competition. It's really, really nicely done. Flip's brilliant in it. Children of the Revolution, which follows on immediately from the one beforehand. With their plans causing havoc, the wicked Quins, Clarent and Delon are at loggerheads, but as the schemes of the Sontaran Battle Marshal Skrr reach a climax, the only thing more dangerous than the brothers competing against each other are the brothers joining forces. And then you've got the story set. So then you've got a story set with Perry again, but this Perry is at the end of her time. Once every thousand years, the frozen planet of Zykos thaws, revealing the most fertile soil in the universe. For a brief window, Zykos becomes a farming capital of the cosmos, and that brings it many visitors, including a small blue box and two occupants, keen to scratch their legs. But as the ice melts, the temperature rises, the Doctor and Perry realise that this pleasant stroll may be the last one they ever take together. It's really nice. You've got some great end of times moments going on with, with Perry and the Sixth Doctor. Each single story has a different version of the Sixth Doctor. It just shows you how good Colin is, and he always has been. Which brings us to the Firstborn by Jacqueline Rayner. The Quins have succeeded in their quest a little too well. Multiple Doctors congregate in Arunapol, bringing with them a terrible threat to reality. Please note, this will come with an audiobook, The Ultimate Poe by Andrew Collins to follow. Please note, the collector's edition CDs are limited to 1,500 pressings. Oh my god, this has just been brilliant. All of the companions and two Perrys, all in one place. I've just loved them. And there's one moment in the last episode where Colin, the oldest version of the Sixth Doctor, goes, here's a list of my companions, and he reels it off. And it is a punch-the-air moment. Everyone's there, everyone's mentioned, and it just makes everyone so damn happy. Look, I don't often tell people to go and buy these things because that's not what these reviews are for. These reviews are for me to say if I enjoyed something or if I didn't find it as good, but like I said, this is the all-time best Sixth Doctor release. And it's got some healthy competition. I would say buy this. I would say own this because it's just a glorious celebration of everything that Big Finish has done for the Sixth Doctor and for us as fans. Because some of us didn't like the Sixth Doctor at the time. Some of us were 10. Some of us were 12. Some of us were 14. And we were all wrong. We were. Because Colin is the Doctor. He is THE Colin Baker. And we will always love him. And this is just a love letter to his time. Here's the trailer. Decide for yourself. But if you decide against it, you'll be wrong. Because it's just brilliant. Be seeing you. My people! 40 years ago today, I had the great honour of becoming your king! I know you are eager to hear which of my sons will soon be exalted in my place. From Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Sixth Doctor Adventures, The Quinn Dilemma. They're identical. Yep. Identical Quinns? Yep. <gasps> Their poor mother. What monstrous space-time event has brought us together? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I have heard talk of you, Doctor. The madman dressed as a rainbow. Who are you travelling with? A certain Miss Perpagillium Brown. My hands are too cold to clap. The incomparable 
Melanie Bush. I'm starting to get a very bad feeling about this. The dynamic dream team of Flip and Mrs. Clark. I think it's all turned out rather well, don't you? Oh, Flip. I hope they don't go to too much trouble. A medal, for example, would be rather embarrassing. <laughs> My sons, I hope that one of you will make me proud. My throne will go to whoever first brings me the head of the Doctor! Big Finish for the love of stories. That was the Tin Dog Podcast. Everything discussed is the intellectual property of others. No infringement is intended. For early access to reviews, follow the show on YouTube or Twitter at Tin Dog Podcast. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 